Welcome back, everybody, to my new site, Stan Short Stories. It's Stan the Man, Carmen, talking at you. I'm going to be reading you a story from my second book, Stan Short Stories, Some Dark, Some Not. The title of the story is Heart Trouble. All right, well, before I begin the story, I have a little introduction to the manuscript, Some Dark, Some Not. These are short stories that have come from my imagination throughout my life. Four of these stories are based upon actual dreams that I can vividly remember to this day. PCP and the Bicycle Ride Dream, A Vacation to Hell, the mailbox, and the pandemic executioner. And so here's the story, Heart Trouble, which is the very first short story I wrote in Mrs. Way's creative writing class as a sophomore at Morris High School. Percy had convinced his mother that he would be back home from Jerry's birthday party by seven. He still couldn't believe that he had convinced her that they were going to Farrell's ice cream parlor. Come on, Mom. Farrell's? At 13 years old? Well, maybe she'd be coming more gullible at her old age. What was she going to be now? 60? Yeah, I guess 60 is pretty old. He wondered if that had anything, anything to do with why he needed a pacemaker. He pulled up his shirt and looked down at, at the small scar at his stomach where it had been surgically implanted. He had read when a woman has a child late in life, sometimes it can present health problems for the kid. Oh well, what's done is done. Besides, not being able to participate in contact sports at school? It wasn't really that big of a deal, was it? I mean, he could still have fun with his friends without participating in contact sports. Maybe he could join the swim team when he got to high school. That would be cool. There was a knock at the door. It was Roger. Hey, Precious, you ready? He said. Roger Dodger, Percy said. Hey, don't call me that. It sounds dorky. Well, fine, then don't call me Precious. But you're just so darn cute, he said. Go to hell, Roger. Percy, watch that language, his mother said as she walked up from behind him. Okay, sorry, Mom. Good afternoon, Mrs. Franklin, said Roger. Hi, Roger. How's your mom and dad? Oh, just swell, he said. Okay, Percy. Farrell's birthday party and back by seven, right? Yes, Mom. Okay, boys, have a good time. Percy grabbed his backpack as they went out the front door. Roger looked at Percy quizzically as they walked towards Roger's brother's car. Farrell's? you got to be kidding me. She actually bought that? He said. Just keep walking, Percy said, and he turned to wave to his mother. Why couldn't you just have said, we're just going to go out and have some fun with your friends, he said. Oh, you know how she gets. Oh, Percy, that's too much excitement for you with your condition. Anyway, what she doesn't know won't hurt her. Meep! Come on, you little brats, hurry up. I haven't got all day. They both got in the car. Richie, you told Mom and Dad that you would take us because they both have to go to work today. That doesn't mean I gotta like it, he grumbled and peeled out. Thanks again for taking us, Dick. Richie slammed on the brakes. 
You can call me Richie or Rich. If you call me Dick one more time, I will put you in the hospital. You got that, Precious? Okay, chill. I was just kidding, said Percy. Richie hit the gas. So where, where are we really going, Rog? I told you. Belmont Park. You're finally going to get your wish. That giant dipper roller coaster. Percy swallowed hard with an audible click deep in his throat. Uh, yeah, he said. That sounds groovy. Bitchin'. Never groovy, precious, said Richie. Okay, Richie. Bitchin', said Percy. Richie parked his car at the amusement park parking lot. Roger and Percy got their backpacks out of the trunk. Okay, you brats. We, we meet at 11.30 at the roller coaster. That'll be the last ride before we go home. Don't be late. Okay, Richie, said Roger. Come on, Percy, let's see what's happening at the beach. But first, let's go by the snack bar. I want to get a snow cone. After they got their snow cones, they cut through the park and headed for the beach. The beach was packed. Most all of the people were laying on their beach blankets, some with umbrellas, some not. But nearly everyone was covered in suntan lotion, cooking out in the sun like human bacon. Percy never could figure out what the point was. When summer was over, most all of them returned to their pale white self. Let's get our trunks and do some swimming, Percy. Wait. Where's the dressing room? asked Percy. Oh, don't be a wussy. You just wrap your towel around your waist when you change. Nobody's watching anyway, he said. Percy watched as Roger wrapped his towel around his waist and sat down in the sand. Pants and underwear off, trunks on. Okay, let's go. Just set your backpack next to mine, he said. Percy got changed and set his backpack down next to Roger's. Roger gave Percy a strange look. How did you get that scar on your stomach, he asked. Well, that's where my pacemaker was implanted when I was a kid, he said. That's weird. I thought it was supposed to be where your heart is. I don't know. I never thought to ask my mom why. Is there anything you can't do, he asked. Well, if it was up to my mom... I would live my life in a big plastic bubble, he said. Roger started sprinting for the water. Come on, let's go hit the surf, he said. Percy ran up to catch, ran to catch up to him. Suddenly, Roger came to a screeching halt. Hold it, Percy, he said. Percy stopped abruptly. Oh, crap. Would you look at all those jellyfish? As far as the eye could see, there was a two to th three foot width of dead jellyfish washed up on the shore. What happened? asked Percy. Red tide. No wonder no one is swimming. Oh, well, let's go, Rog, Percy said. There you go, talking like a wussy again. What do you mean? asked Percy. Just follow my lead, Roger said. Roger ran back about 50 feet and stopped. Okay, now what do I do? Just follow my lead. He sprinted towards the water and at the last second did a running broad jump right over the dead jellyfish landing in the water. Okay, your turn, he said. Percy hesitated. Come on, there's nothing to it, he said. Percy tried back about the same distance. He sprinted towards the water. At the last second, he leaped and landed in the water right next to Roger. Right on. Now let's do some body surfing. What's that? asked Percy. You just ride the wave in without a surfboard, dummy, he said. Percy watched his technique and then mimicked him. As they were waiting for the next wave, Roger said, 
Let's leave after this next one. Verse she nodded. They both started swimming with the wave. It was a big one. As they were riding the wave, the force of the wave drove Percy to the bottom, striking his chin and handing his chest and stomach into the sand. He felt Roger helping him to his feet. What happened, Percy? He said, very concerned. You look white as a sheet and your chin is bleeding. I don't know, I guess I kind of blacked out, he said. Are you sure you're okay, Roger asked. Percy could feel his heart start to fibrillate. This had happened once before when he had fallen out of a swing at the playground and knocked the wind out of him. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. That's good, you had me worried for a minute, he said. All right, let's go get changed and head back to the park. Okay, Percy said. They went on some of the various rides. Each time, Percy, Percy feeling that irregular heartbeat. By the time they got to the arcade, it was getting dark. Well, we got about 10 minutes before we're gonna meet my brother and his friends at the roller coaster, Roger said. Groot, I mean, bitchin' Rog. His heart was racing. Calm down, calm down, he told himself. They waited at the entrance to the roller coaster. Percy noticed that the operator and some guy in a suit were conversing. Carl, did that new signage on the top of the roller coaster put a stop to the kids standing up when they get to the top? He said. So far, so good, Mr. Gibson. And this is the last ride of the night. At about 11.45, Richie and his friends showed up, reeking of alcohol. The operator motioned for them to enter. Okay, girls, we're going to go to the front row. You girls sit behind us, Richie said. Percy sat down next to Roger. Hey, girls, you can hold hands if you get scared, chuckled Richie. Screw you, Richie, and wait till Mom finds out you've been drinking again, he said. Richie turned around and dug his fingers into his shoulder. You better keep your mouth shut, he growled at him. The roller coaster took off. Percy was petrified as they rocketed down the first drop. He clutched the safety bar with all of his might and closed his eyes. Hang on, Percy, it's almost over, said Roger. They rocketed down the last drop. As a roller coaster reached the top, Richie screamed, Stand up, everybody! As he jerked Roger to his feet. Roger, Roger heard the sound as a sign knocked Richie, Roger, and his friends right out of the roller coaster. Percy watched in horror as her bodies fell like pinballs to the bottom. Percy lost consciousness. Percy heard a strange, irregular beeping sound. He opened his eyes. He was lying on a hospital bed. He looked to his left. His mother was sitting in a chair, fast asleep. He glanced down at the newspaper on her lap. The headline read, Four people fall to their death at Belmont Park roller coaster ride. Percy's eyes sprung wide open. He felt a jolt through his body. He clutched his chest. His mother thought she was having a bad dream. She heard the sound of a steady tone. She opened her eyes and looked at the straight horizontal line at the monitor. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for listening to that story. I will be back in about a week to read another one. Hope you all can make it. Until then, goodbye.